Hi, I'm Janice from Treble Tree Music, and this is part three of my series about never plan elementary music lessons again. And this is part three template of yearly planning. And we, we always know that if we have complete lesson plans ready to go, then that Sunday night stress is gone away from being ready to teach on Monday. And doing complete lesson plans for the whole year is really going to make you feel ready to go the whole year, the next year, and just tweaking the lessons a little bit. I wish as a veteran elementary music teacher, I could say that I've always been organized in my music lesson preparations, but it's not true. It's been a work in progress. All musicians are creative. I think we are. And I, I'm no exception. I like to do new things. I like to do a variety of lessons. I like to do new music activities. And I'd like my students to do that as well. And sometimes that has led to a little bit of randomness when in the music classroom. I know the truth hurts. I'm sure you're not like that at all. Well, and the other challenge for the music uh, elementary music teacher is that sometimes we're teaching six to nine classes a day, five days a week, and there's no passing time. And the scheduling of uh, physical, you know, PE and library and lunch schedules, it is really tight. And we, we just have to go from one class to another and be ready to go. And as a teacher, I have to be prepared with lessons that reflect that and to be ready to fully teach the concepts and the, be able to assess the comprehension and um, understand how far they're getting in each of the lessons. Well, I learned a lesson from a young person. We learned from young voices years ago, many years ago, and I wasn't too long out of my collegiate teacher training for music. My habit was organizing my papers in piles on my desk, and sometimes they bled over onto the floor, so there was a sea of papers. And I'd try to get things in a cabinet, but that activity is always last on my to-do list. That's that uh, creative person in me, I think. One afternoon, my choir, my high school choir, was cleaning up from a concert and one of the young men looked around and he said, you have every available flat surface being utilized. You have every available flat surface being utilized. And I thought about that and I go, what? Where did you ever hear something like that? And he says, my dad says that to me every week when we talk about cleaning up my room. Well, I'm not surprising. I went home and the whole weekend I cleaned up my classroom, I spent in my classroom cleaning it up and I doubled down on organization and I was embarrassed. And maybe that's the embarrassment that put me into the oh, trying to really make sure I'm organized and then share those kind of skills that I learned the hard way with others. So this third lesson is about a yearly plan. It's mapping out what lessons we're going to do, what units, which lessons, and part of that prep is making sure that you have done a curriculum map and you've outlined which lessons you're going to do depending on how many uh, times you see your kids and what kind of curriculum you have. Some curriculum is you only teach the four core lessons for two times a week, some you teach three, and so make sure that you're diving into your curriculum. More information about that in uh, my first um, part where it's talking about uh, how to do that curriculum map, and I'll leave you a link for that here. Next, you're going to want to do a grade level planning, and that's deciding now that you've decided which lessons you're going to teach, let's get those concepts and the activities in a broad stroke template and have those available for part of our planning for the year. You may find you might want to do this part of one lesson and this not uh, another part of this other lesson, but if you have that map, that'll make it a lot easier to do your lesson planning. Well, let's go ahead and get to that yearly plan. One of the things you're going to need uh, in addition is a calendar of events. You probably already know that you have a holiday program in December. You might have a, um, um, a program in the spring. You might have a fifth grade choir concert at another time of the year. There might be field trips planned. So get those into that yearly planner as soon as you can. Pencil everything. If you're doing it digitally, that's easy to change at any time. Then you're going to take your curriculum and take your map and your unit planner and pencil in each day 
of, of your annual planner. And so for that, what I might do is I know that it's, uh, I want to do kindergarten unit one, lesson one. Um, I'm going to do that the third week. So I write that in. And for my third graders, the fourth week, I'm going to want to do lesson. This is in September. Lesson one, uh, finish lesson one from the previous week and then do start lesson two. So I've got that in my planner. I also like to do um, guitar uh, certain times a year. I don't I tend to not do it during the whole year. I do it in January with a with a month of strings, I'll do ukulele, violins in that in that January. So I pencil that in. And then I also pencil in, I like to do a piano unit at the very end. Um, and then as we're, after we got all of those kinds of things in a broad stroke, then we can start to really be specific about what lessons. And then we can adjust as we go. So if there was some kind of uh, power outage, you can always move that lesson back another week. Um, I also do one more thing. I do a start date for any prep on any of my lessons on my yearly planner. So I like to do six weeks, six weeks out. That works for me in the prep. That means when I get to that start, that program prep, I've got to have all of my materials ready. And I always can see that date's coming. Uh oh, that, that beginning, that beginning concert prep is coming up. You have to choose what's right for you. Nothing's wrong. Everything is what you, you know, whatever works for you for sure. I also have an activity, music activity and event planning calendar. I'll put a link down here and I'm going to focus a little bit on that in the next couple of videos. And that's also something where uh, I have a, it's a template where you can put the con the event and then it has a checkbox for ordering a bus. It has a checkbox for checking with the custodian. Those are some details of concert planning that really can be overwhelming. But if we have a little template for that, so I'll share that with you as well. Um, you know, the, the most important thing about lesson planning is don't worry about being perfect at this planning stage. Get everything out in, onto your year-long planner. Just get a draft, and there will be plenty of time to add more details later on. And, you know, you can do it. And this project is about three to four hours to get this yearly planner done with relationship to all of the unit planning and um, lesson planning. I think you can do it. I know you can do it. Um, I have a detail in this in this video too at the bottom of what a, how I do it. I download the resource and how to page. And I'll give you all of those extra things in there to get through it. Whatever you do, just get started. You can do it. And give yourself a, a little reward as you do each piece and part. That always makes my day happy. Oh, I got a little bit more done. You can do it. Thanks for following. And, and if you have any questions, uh, like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate the help.